Carolina Fishing TV, showing you how to catch more fish. Mike's got me on a really good school of menhaden right here. A lot of these menhaden have got small, like 12 to 15 inch bluefish underneath them, and a few of those would be really nice to have too for today. See so if we can open that net on that spot right there. There's a load of them right here. There we go. A bunch of like five, six inch pogies and a couple of bluefish in with them. And basically, we're going to be targeting amberjack that show up here in the late spring, early summer. We start catching these fish from about late in May is where it begins, and we catch them all the way through the fall, October, November. And these fish are running from like 20 pounds to 50 plus pounds. It's an amazing fight, just an amazing fight. Um, it's like digging grouper, except for the fight doesn't end. We're basically using a jigging stick. I've got these Shakespeare ugly sticks. These are the Tiger Lights. They're, uh, this one in particular right here is a 50 to 100 pound test class rod. I've got a Penn Conquer 7000s on them. Got some 55 pound test, the new Berkeley Tracer braid on there. We're using a swivel on this, using about a 70 to 100 pound test swivel. And then I've got probably about four, four and a half feet, five feet, maybe even of 80 pound test fluorocarbon. And then we're using from a six aught to a seven aught circle hook. A lot of times we're releasing these fish too. That circle hook catches them in the corner of that jaw every single time, allowing us to let those fish go unharmed. Mike and I are getting ready to head out there this morning. And, uh, and see what the ocean has to offer today. See if we can get those amberjack on and, and have a good time with them. So stay tuned to Carolina Fishing TV, folks. You got your rail on top of the wreck. He's actually coming back to the wreck on you. He ain't going nowhere. He's up off that bottom. I tell you what he is. They're over overlooked, aren't they? <laughs> awesome fight. <laughs> I've, I've probably got 30 pounds of drag on this reel right now. You're doing a lot of grunting for the first fish. When Jeff brings this fish up, I'll be mighty surprised if he doesn't have a couple buddies with him. You, you want to keep a rod ready to pitch to one of the, uh, his friends there. A lot of times we'll let him just lay there in the water and uh, until we get hooked up again. And as long as you can keep on you know, hooking one up, you can, keep them, fish. you can keep them around your boat. Yeah, that's a nice one there. I see color. See him? See, see that big one behind him? Come on. Come over here and find my bait. Got him on. <laughs> he nailed it. I had a group of guys on yesterday with me from uh, Missouri. And uh, they said they didn't care about bringing no meat home. They just wanted to catch fish. We brought them out here and we caught them. Well, that's the thing about it. These fish right here offer one of the best fights out here. Um, you know, the average person can come out and get them. I mean, just about every artificial reef and most of your big ledges have got them on them. I definitely prefer them over King Michael as far as eating. They're great eating. White meat, white flaky. Great fight. The fish go about 30 pounds, 35 pounds. Calm down, boy. We have been out here, what, 15 <laughs> minutes? Yeah. Sitting in big eyes, they can see steel leaders. Some days it don't matter they're so fired up, there's so many of them that you can catch them. But you put that four carbon leader out, down there with that single hook, you get him every time. Pretty fish. I know one thing, you might as well get that bluefish in that hook too, that was a big bluefish. It's a pound and a half, a good pound and a quarter pound and a half bluefish you had on. It's all quite a, oh there he is, I'm on. Oh he's going boy. There's going to be one on the back rod in a second. Mm. These feel like a little smaller fish than what we had up there. Our favorite thing to do is get some clients out here and lock the drags down completely and give them a rod. <laughs> I see some color, I see some color, boys. Pretty AJ, about 25 pounds.
even steal a man's fish with it. <laughs> and they're easy to handle. They have no teeth. Put them up and them up. I'll hook the bottom left hand to the top. You won't be able to breathe anyway. That's all there is to it. Fish seem to be wanting to take a little bit better on top. So what we're going to do is just cut one of our weights off so we'll have two on top. A lot of times what you can do is chum them up. When I say chum them up, you just take two or three baits and throw them out. And after a fish hits a bait with no hook on it, no leader, it's not his leader shot. He'll come up to your leader and, and then take your bait. I mean, we do that with a lot of fish. King mackerel, Spanish mackerel. Uh, that method is used all the time by myself and Jeff. We'll intentionally load our live wells down with baits, front and back. Look at it. One more bait. Here he comes. Got it. That was a nice take. I had to reel it and get it skip across the water before you to take it. They're kind of leader shy. I mean, these fish can be really leader shy. See, if I just drill down and pull up, it just slips right back out. Nothing happens. Now, if I grab it and put a little bit more tension, that way if he starts shaking his head or makes a drastic run, you just release it. He's going, I think he's saying this fish. Oh, look out. Two or three with it. All right. Now, so we can see. You know, two or three fish here with this fish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this rod in the rod holder. Obviously, we have a bait out here. I'm gonna reel this bait in a little bit. We just let lines out and we're easing real close to the buoy. That school of fish was right on the buoy, we could see them. Mike eased up to the buoy. One of the lines, the wind caught it, wrapped right around that buoy there. Fish grabbed it right at the side of the buoy, jerked down on it, took that braid and it carved right inside in a split second. It carved its way into the buoy about a half inch deep in the back corner of the buoy. And he was on there just digging and pulling on the, on the, the main buoy up there. <laughs> we had a backup to it and get that, uh, that braid out of, the, out of the crack that it carved into the buoy there. We got it off there, it's crazy. <laughs> if that was a tournament or something like that, and that was a big Kobe or a big King, it would never happen, never happen. Oh, let's lock down on this bad boy and get him up here. I'm gonna grab this other rod, put this in the rod holder for just a second while he's on there. Grab this rod. Get it set up just in case another one comes along here. Take this in case he's got a friend back there. They're right out behind him. You can't really do much with them when they're running. All you can do is let them go. It's no different than fishing that real light tackle on the back when we get on those pig reds that are about 30 plus inches. If he wants to go, he's going to go, and all you can do is work them and pump them when he stops running line off. That's what it's all about though. It's about hearing that run and feeling that fight, man. This is awesome. 
we don't usually spend a whole day on these fish, but we'll make a pit stop, spend an hour or two, hook up a half a dozen or a dozen of them, let our clients or friends, whoever's on board, battle them for a few minutes, maybe take one or two back to the, to the dock to clean up and release all the rest of them unharmed, keep one or two all day, 28 inch fork length minimum. You don't catch too many 28 inches or under. So every one of these fish with a circle hook is hooked in the corner of that mouth. Get a good battle out of them. Release them to catch another day. Mm. Mm. Ain't too bad, he'll go 30 pounds. Nice one. Some fun stuff, folks. Now, late May, June, through the summer, through the fall, they're out here. It takes live bait most of the time to catch them, any numbers of them. Live menhaden, live threadfin herring, live bluefish, anything about six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches long. We're using some big bluefish today, probably from 12 inches to 16 inches long, and some big threadfin herring, eight plus inches. Like I said earlier, if they get a little leader shy, you know, extend that fluorocarbon. We got probably six foot of fluorocarbon leader on this one right now. And uh, Mike had that little trick there. They get a little shy, and especially if it gets calm out here, he takes a rod tip and just rips it through the top of the water, and you think it would scare them away, but they come flying up to it to check it out. Get him kicking again. Most of the fish you catch out there, whether it's in the backwaters or in the ocean, typically the smaller fish, you know, the 15, 20, 30 pounders, sometimes uh, they don't have much worms either. Eventually they develop worms, and when they do, there'll be worms in the lower third from about here down, and the upper third from about here up, and that center portion right here usually doesn't have worms in it. Now, if I had just cleaned one or two and, and they had worms in them, then I would just focus on the middle third right there and cut it out. But uh, one side, we'll check them out by filleting the whole side off. And if they do have any, I'll show you what they look like and how you can avoid that. And just like any fish that we're cleaning, we're basically just outlining that fish. Cut them right down the top fin. You don't have to go real deep, just slide in about an inch or two, just break that skin. And just feel that bone. Run right down that bone, a little deeper. This is stomach, uh, not much meat on it. I'm gonna take and run right down that main backbone there. There's a slab right there. And there's some worms right there just in the tail end of it. They're right down here in the tail end of the meat. See it? The rest of this meat all looks good from here on up. There's nothing in it. Just cut that piece off. That's about that back third I was talking about. Anytime I'm uh, taking the skin off most of my ocean these fish are catching offshore, I leave a little bit of meat on that skin. That's the bloodline. Now when I flip this loin over, there's almost none of that bloodline left on it. See it just a little bit right there, you can trim that off. Take out this rib bone here, and then we'll take this and basically just start making little steaks out of them. Really nice meat. You can go ahead and cook in the frying pan. You can season it up, put it on the grill. It's got a good consistency of real white meat, not strong at all. Amber jackets, often overlooked. It's an awesome fight out there. Great table fare. Come on down to Swansboro and get you some. This will last all summer long. Bill. Yeah, I saw his bill. He's gaining it right steady, Billy. Bill fish off, baby. 
build fish off. Oh boy! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 